Well, the cool pool is about to grow, guys, so. Yes, the cool pool is about to grow. Besides you, John, because I saw the look on your face. I was going to say now, you're not going to acknowledge me since I'm the one you're going to be watching Holes with tonight, young lady? (laughs) Yeah, the movie we couldn't finish. (laughs) Holes is awesome. Holes is a good favorite. We started okay. last night. We got like 35 minutes in, and then I went to bed. No, we got all lovey dovey, and then oh, you yeah. went to bed. And then we went to Okay, bed. yes, yes. <laughs> Me and John could not finish a movie. That's like. Uh, our best. <laughs> we got 30 minutes. We, we got less than 30 minutes left in Urban Cowboy, didn't we? <laughs> yeah, but it's taken us two days to finish it. It's a long ass movie. It's two hours and 30 minutes. That's the ass length of a movie. I think. That's the life of a long distance couple living in the same state. Oh my gosh. Well, you know, you got movies, you got the internet. You guys are good. Oh, Hannah, here. Hannah Kennedy joined. This is my other friend that I was telling y'all about. Hey. Our other friend. Awesome. Everyone's showing up for you, John. This is awesome. Hey, Hey, Hannah. Hi. What's up? Not much. All right. Glad you could make it, girl. Thank you. Where's where's Ty? Ty, she's up. Oh, I don't know. Everyone else is screaming. She's up to the. She's right under. No, I mean, her husband's name is Ty, too. Uh, Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yes, her husband's name is Ty. Turn light off. Turn turn alarm off. Echo, turn alarm off. Echo won't listen. Oh my to gosh. Me. I have an alarm set for Crip Chat. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's that important. Hannah, nice to meet you. I'm Pauline. I live in Hawaii. Hi. Where are it's you nice from? Nice to meet you. Augusta, Georgia. Oh, cool. <laughs> Another Southerner, yep. yay! <laughs> Another Southerner, yay! We love the South. The South is awesome. Yeah, it's where South we say pop instead of soda. Nicest people. Live. Yep. The nicest people. I don't know. I feel like the Aloha in Hawaii is pretty sweet too. <laughs> I, that's like a. That's like a. Like a, that's like kind of like a a, a bliss blissful place you got the ocean and you know the south we're just like you know we're this you know south has a history you know so i just think it gets a bad rep and that's why I like that. hawaii exactly <laughs> it's like the paradise you know that everybody wants to go visit yeah yeah very blessed to live here all right I know. I mean, I would, can't wait till I can visit you, but it'll happen one day. Maybe I'll do a GoFundMe again. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, know. to like meet yeah. everybody. Well, you're not gonna do GoFundMe. You're gonna like sell lots of art and make money. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Well, I meant just right you. now. But I'm not gonna go right now because I'd have to quarantine for two yeah, weeks. No, no, don't do no, that. No, you know, you know, over here in Florida, the bars are closed and all the restaurants are gonna close again too because we got over nine thousand cases. Yeah, Texas, mm-hmm. I went back up too. So, which I knew was gonna happen. That's what I told my, Robert. I was like, you know, it's gonna happen. they're just gonna close everything back down. Gonna- <laughs> yep. People are getting sick. So. Enjoy your two seconds of freedom because it's going to be ruined for another two months. Oh. Mom's like, well, you're going to have a quarantine birthday because my birthday is the 7th of July. Yep. So she's like, you're having a quarantine birthday. Well, you know, <laughs> when you have a birthday during quarantine, you can just celebrate when everything goes back to normal and not get a year older. Oh, yeah, that's true. Good one. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. Yeah, you're going to be like 25 <sighs> <laughs> yeah, my twenty sixth birthday. I'm I'm going to Vegas or, or I'm going to where John is and I'm getting some crawfish, okay? Mm. <laughs> well you are just you are just too much, Ty. Well, and I'm inviting all you guys with me. <laughs> hey, Leah, my your birthday is on my wedding anniversary date. Seven I know, which makes it so cool. Can we do it? 
Bowl set them right here because I'm hosting this meeting. Okay, yeah. so it is 11.03. I think people will continue trickling in um, oh. as they uh, come in uh, and we'll just right. let them go. So um, I just want to welcome everybody to Crip Chat. I'm so excited and get excited every Saturday to see the familiar faces we've grown to love and to welcome new faces. Um, Jade, Hannah, Kathy, thank you so much for being here. And uh, You're welcome. this is not your last time. Hopefully you like <laughs> what here and you'll keep coming back. Um, but Crip Chat was created with the intention of bringing together the disability community um, in a positive way. And I feel like it has attracted so many positive movers and shakers who are doing something in the world um, who, who stand for um, inclusion and equality and so much. Um, so exactly. I'm so excited. So um, just so you guys know, um, Crip Chat is actually pretty young. I mean, we've been only doing this for like a couple months, I feel like. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, about, two, about two and a half, two, three months, something like that. Yeah, right. Since quarantine started, I it was a put on my heart to create this. Quarantine started. Two days later, the idea of Crip Chat came to my mind. And two days later, we hosted our first call. So here we are, um, and what we started doing was inviting people to be guest hosts. Like, even though I thought about CryptChat, I don't know everything there is to know, and, and this is our community, and I really wanted to give it over to, um, to all of us. So uh, we had our first host, Tylea Flores, who talked about how to overcome negative thinking, and I felt, yes, like Priya snapping. I, I don't know how to, I can't clap. And then we had Priya Ray last week doing um, how to uh, advocate. And it was, I feel like it's such lively conversations that are happening. And we're so excited to have this week, John Wood. He is an author and advocate and he is somebody um, who I got the pleasure of getting to know through Crip Chat, then had him on my uh, YouTube channel on my show called Chair Chats. I, I guess people, I, I like to chat a lot. So it's in a lot of my titles. Um, but he is also a young millennial making waves. And um, like I said, he's an author and advocate and had his first book uh, published. Um, and I know it's the first of many, uh, and he's a lot of a lot of other treasures. And so he came to me asking if he could talk about and have a facilitate the conversation about how do we tell our story as a person with a disability. And so I'm intrigued about what he had to say. So I hope this is something that we can all um, benefit from and uh, have a good time. Huh? Yeah. Thank you so much for coming back. Woo! You're right. Hi, she. How are you guys? Great. Great. So we just I just finished up with the introduction. Um gonna hand it over to John Wood, who's the author and advocate, um, about how do we tell our story as people with disabilities. So I'm gonna put myself on mute. Oh, if you're we're not talking, if you could put yourself on mute and then that way. Um, I, this is re being recorded, but it doesn't, um, we don't cancel each other out. So, um, and if you want to talk, if you can maybe just, there's like a raise hand option in Zoom mm -hmm. or, or raise your hand or, I don't know, do a little shake, guy, whatever is for you. All right. I'm going to hand it over. Thanks, John. You're welcome. <clears throat> All right. Well, Thanks for the introduction, Pauline. That was actually part of what I had in my notes. Um, I honestly don't know what to say. Um, I'm just going to give a little bit of backstory about myself, not too much. Um, I'm 26 years old. I just celebrated what I call the 26th, the start of the 26th round of my fight against spina bifida and currently winning me. Because I'm kicking Spina Bifida's butt right now. Yes, yes. Thank you, Priya. Um, yeah. I have Spina Bifida. 
uh, I have the most severe form of my of spina bifida, which is uh, if you really want to Google it or whatever, it's uh, called myelomeningeal seal. I am paralyzed from the waist down. I am in a wheelchair, and as Pauline mentioned, I am the published author of three books. One of which is my life story autobiography called A Fight to Survive, which was published March 9th this year. I'm working with my publisher right now to facilitate the publication of my second book, which is a religious devotional type called Disability Devotionals. And hopefully I'll have more information on that soon. But I wanted to basically give a little bit more about myself in the aspect of advocating and all of my other titles. I am a disability advocate, a motivational speaker, and a youth leader in the Assemblies of God Church. I started to accept my disability fully when I was about 17 years old. I, that's when I kind of realized that I wanted to start living my life to the fullest. I wanted to start doing what I figured I wasn't going to be around much longer to do. I wasn't supposed to live two hours and be here. I wasn't supposed to live 26 years. Here I am. But I want to talk to y'all today because we only have one life to live, and it's up to us to figure out how we want to portray ourselves. Do we play the victim or the victor? Are we going to let our disability swallow us whole, or are we going to step up and lock our disability in a closet? My disability hasn't stopped me from doing anything. I've published and written two books or books for two years. But what I want to know right now is, even though I'm kind of charging this phone right now, I'm trying to put, you know, y'all into perspective for a, real, for a little bit. I want us to go around and, you know, randomly, I want to hear y'all basically tell me how you were letting, how are, how are you telling your story with your different ability? So one of y'all, um, it doesn't matter. We can just go in order or whatever. Um, I want to hear one of y'all tell me, you know, go in order, tell me how you're letting your disability tell your life story. Why don't you call up the names, John, because I think the orders are different on everybody's screen. Okay. 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 Jade, we'll get back to you. Uh, feel better. Um, Priya, since you actually talked, um, since you actually, could you, would you like to go first? Sure, you know I love to talk. <laughs> I'm so glad. Um, so yeah, I had a spinal injury in 1999. I was 29 years old. Um, before that, I was in a band. Um, I'm still. I was. I'm in a band. Uh, I was an artist. I was part of a, a DIY community, which is DIY stands for do it yourself. And so that just means we kind of figured out how to do things uh, on our own, things that didn't. Actually, it was really great because I actually talked to this woman, Mariella, Mariella Paulino, yesterday, and she, she's deaf. And we, I was explaining to her, someone asked me what DIY was, and Paulina was explain, explain, uh, Mariella was explaining it as, um, for her, um, like sometimes when you're disabled, something doesn't exist for you and you have to create it. So you have this pile of things that are created and that aren't there for you and you have to figure out how to create it. And that's essentially what a DIY community is. If things weren't available for us to play music or show our art. And so we created it ourselves. So then I have, and you know, it's a community that I helped. I wasn't the only one, but I helped cultivate it and was a big part of creating a lot of what's going on today with that. And um, so when I had my injury, I kind of thought about what I wanted to do. And I decided I wanted to continue to create art and, you know, play in the band and do everything. So I basically um, re-entered this world and, you know, realized it wasn't really to people with disabilities even though it was it 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 uh prided itself on being inclusive to people of color lgbtq you know all the minority people that exist in the world they were advocates or allies to them and you know 
those are selling art and donating money to different organizations. But when I entered that world, I uh, they're not really, and you know, I was a part of that. I was guilty of that myself, that we weren't inclusive to people with disabilities. And it wasn't until I became disabled, I realized that. So I am also a person of color, woman, also so the way I advocate for those groups was by my presence and being there. And I thought, oh, okay, now I'll add this other being disabled, you know, my presence in this community as an advocacy. But I realized it wasn't enough. My presence was enough that I actually had to start telling people like, hey, you have a step here. Hey, there's no room for a wheelchair. You know, so I felt like my presence was not enough and I actually had to start speaking up about which I find weird because it wasn't that so much for being a person of color or a woman for me in that community but right. as a disabled person I was invisible and you know and I feel like the DIY is like the grassroots community and that I think roots out into the other parts of the community. And if you're invisible in this grassroots community, then you're going to be invisible in the entire community. So that's when I started DIY Abled and decided to go inform my first, my community, the DIY community about disability. But then I, you know, now I want to, you know, venture out into, you know, other worlds because obviously it's not just a problem in the DIY community. It's a problem in the community in general. So, right. so why I feel the need, that's how I advocate. I write these zines. I try to talk. I've been doing these DIY able talks on Instagram live because my plan was to go and speak out. But now that the quarantine's happened, I'm like, well, yeah, I'm happen again. So I gotta, exactly. I'm going to use Instagram live and do it this way. So that's what, I've been doing and, and, you know, talking to you, all of you and, you know, and participating in panels and stuff that Ty took a part of this week. That was so awesome. It was really exciting for me. So thank yeah. you, Bria, for, oh, for spamming the chat box this week going, yes, yes, yes. Oh. Ty exactly. All right. Language, but I want to say hell no. And I was like, hell yes, tie in the chat. I was like, hell yes. <laughs> so I was Ty's cheerleader in the chat. That's awesome. That is awesome. All right. Well, my dad just turned on my air conditioner, so I hope y'all can hear me a little bit better. Or whatever. Well, at least you're going to be cooler and you won't be as hot. Oh, long. God, yes. It's hot so, as heck in my office. I guess. No. So good thing. All right, go for it. That Who's was next? great. Uh, Tylea, do you want to go next, huh? Well, how, thank you, John. Well, how I tell my story is using my voice and using my life experience to write stories and write articles based on my good experience and my bad experience. But lately, I found myself having more of a passion for writing and advocating. So it's both, you know. And with each words that I type is a story that I have to tell, good or bad. So, yeah. I cannot believe that that was actually the perfect, the most perfect answer I could ever hear. Okay, um, I'm looking in the chat here, uh, trying to get all the new ones' names. Um, Hannah, Hannah Kennedy. Yes. You're next, my friend. Oh, <laughs> what's the question? The question was, how are you telling your story? Now, I've only known you for a little bit, and I know that you do have autism. So how are you letting your autism tell your story? How are you letting, how are you telling your autism story through your daily life? Um, well, I have autism and bipolar and anxiety and ADHD, and I wrote a book about it, and I started a YouTube channel, and I write poems about it and kind of just like do groups like this and chat. That's awesome. That is awesome. Okay. Um, get back into the chat here and, or the 
thing here and look at the hold on i'm trying to participate okay uh next next i want to hear from oh my gosh i'm gonna ruin this name shalia shalia it's it's just shilla okay it's i'd like to hear your i'd like to hear it's fine um i'd like to hear yours next so I, um, I don't honestly know that I've fully found a way to truly tell my story. Um, I do have things that I do. Um, I am more vocal. Um, it took me a long time. I was diagnosed in 07, but I've been having issues my whole life. Um, I have um, what's called undifferentiated connective tissue disease, and um, I also have narcolepsy, I'm bipolar manic depressive, um, with psychotic tendencies, I'd like to make sure I add that on there, um, uh, but I have, a, I have a lot of things, and uh -huh. I'm a little smorgasbord of fun, but I... I've I had a hard time coming to terms with not being able to do things. And so I what I did what I do, I do write poetry, but I don't I don't write poetry to publish it. I don't write poetry really to say it in a lot of open spaces. Um right. just because of uh, you know some anxiety that I have. I have actually gone to a couple of um um, poetry events and sit there and that was a, a very rewarding feeling not something that I feel like I want to do all the time but I do still write so I have I have my dresser drawer and my little book and so it's there so one day you know I'll put it out there um, I recently over the past I think three years I do a poem on my birthday and I and I post that um, it's it's not extremely detailed, but people that know me and that know that I have these things going on, they definitely get will get the message of you know what I'm saying. Um, but I've I've been able to get a little bit more when I'm in public spaces um, because people do see me in a lot of different arenas. And they just assume that I have all this energy and that I'm capable of doing all these things. And then, uh, you know, what started happening was people wouldn't see me for long periods of time. So then I had to kind of come out and be a little more vocal about the things that I had going on, the health issues that I was, I was experiencing. But one of, um, I have a foundation now, and my foundation actually has nothing to do with being disabled. It's for homeless and transient youth, but it is an arena for me to be able to say a lot in that right. space. Exactly. Exactly. I absolutely love that. Thank you. Okay. Um, next person. Kathy. Um, let's see. I have a lifelong disability. Um, I have cerebral palsy. I have two daughters. Um, my oldest daughter also has uh, cerebral palsy and some other issues. And um, I basically was a single parent. My, um, but she's a, a college graduate, yay. And she's mm -hmm. working and she's living with her fiance. And I have um, my youngest daughter who does not have a disability. And um, I live with a, a lady who has, uh, she also has cerebral palsy and she's getting ready to go into assisted living probably in a couple weeks. Um, I'm, an, I'm a, an advocate and an activist in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, in Iowa, the state of Iowa. And let's just say all the elected officials in Cedar Rapids know who I am. I am, That's not, amazing. Shy about, I am not shy about knocking on their doors. That's and awesome. I do. That's awesome. I'm happy not to be the only one with CP anymore. Um, well, there's actually in Cedar Rapids, and I'm going to tell my, my friends about um, this group, but 
I know seven or eight people in Cedar Rapids that have CP, and I'm sure there's more, but I'm just not seeing them or finding them. But I'm sure there are more. But there's quite a few of us. And we're pretty uh, vocal and pretty active. Um, my, my major soapbox is um, kind of educating the community or the public about um, parents and caregivers who um, murder their loved ones with uh, disabilities of filicide, basically. That's what it's called. So um, every year on the day of mourning, I hold a an activity in Cedar Rapids. And I haven't been arrested yet, thank God, but it's coming someday. <laughs> that's what I do. That That's a lot. Um, that's really thank great. You. Thank you for telling us, thank you. Um, that actually works out. Um, wow. Um, hey, what's your last name? Oh, it's, well, you'll be happy to know I'm not easy to get lost because there's only three of us in this country with this name, but um, it's Halfsey. Oh, how do you spell that? All right. H-A-F as in Frank, S as in Sam, I, and oh. my ex-husband has the last name and his wife. So there's only three of us. Oh, wow. That's, there's a lot of pre-arrays, unfortunately. It's a very I did not know that. Yeah, India's filled with them. <laughs> America knows yeah. them. Um, <laughs> All right. Um, who have I not gone through with yet? Um, someone should raise their hand. How about Jessica? Denise? Or Denise? Yeah, Denise? Denise? I don't think Denise is here yet. I've got I've got a Denise on the yeah. uh, participants oh. list here. Denise is so here, but sorry. I think <clears throat> I'm sorry. Oh, I'm okay. Here. Hey, Denise. Sorry about that. I saw I saw that you were I'm muted and everything. So I just I wanted to yeah. But um, it's yeah, your turn. Go I'm ahead. Sorry. I um you know? I got on kind of late because I was trying to get on to the ASL class I was doing. But um, oh, can you I remember that. fill me in on the question? I didn't. Okay, I'm so sorry. Sorry. We're discussing, we're discussing the topic of uh, how do you tell your story? How do you let your disability tell your story? Or how do you tell your story with your disability? And the question I was asking was basically, how do you let, how do you tell your story? How do you live your life story while also having the disability that you have? Um, if, that, if that makes it any. Uh, simpler. Um, yeah, um, I, I just tell people that um, I have a disability, it's meningitis, and I, I've grown up with it, so I don't know any different. <laughs> um, and I have spasticity, it, I guess, like all throughout my body, I shake, um, I guess, when I'm nervous, and, um, or what, probably what, um, without being nervous, I shake also, so, <laughs> I don't know, um, and another thing is, I, I walk, um, I, I had, I have a limb when I walk, uh -huh. um, I'm trying to correct that surgery in, um, in, in November last year, so it's been a couple of months since then, um, and um, I try to tell people that you could do anything. I graduated with the BA in human development. Um, I'm a um, instructional aide at in school, the school district. Um, I try to tell my kids um, that the software that you can do anything you want as long as you try hard and um, don't give yourself excuses. Like, 
Oh, I can't do this because I'm, I'm a, um, I, I have a disability. Well, the fact is you can, um, you just have to work a little harder to get there. But anything can be done. Um, with being said, um, I, um, I struggled in college and, um, a lot of the classes were really hard, and I had to, um, I was taking statistics for it. It wasn't easy, class, but I managed to do it, and anything can be done if you try. And, um, it, the exactly. perseverance that gets us through, like, anything. No. Okay, so, uh, oh, sorry, Denise. Sorry. I don't know if I answered your question at all. <laughs> you did. Perfect. Okay. Okay, so, John, I'm going to help you out because I know you're on a phone. It's probably harder for you to see. So there's still Jessica, Renee, yes. and I think it's Gina on the 248 um, area code phone. I'm not sure if she's able to let me. I saw that. And I think. I think so. I think. It, yes, it is. Uh, I think that I recognize the number. It is Gina Adams. Yes. Okay. So there's Jessica, Renee, Gina, and myself. I'm not sure if Gina is in a position to be able to speak um, back to us right now. I'm not sure she's traveling or or what. But um, I understand, and I'm getting um I'm getting private messages from Jade right now. She is um having a little bit of um social awkward uh okay. state right now yeah. she would like to type her answers and i'll relay back if that's okay sounds um, great but yes um let's go ahead and i want to go and hear from renee if that's okay. okay i came in late and i'm the bad student here can you repeat the question i'm sorry uh <laughs> yeah. good to see you by the way the question is how do you let your disability tell your story or in, in, on the flip side, how do you tell your story with your disability? Oh my God. I wish you had told me this like a month ago. Um, I understand. It's a big question. And uh, I don't know that I have the answer like everybody else does. Like, I think I'm in a group with people who have really worked through this stuff and a lot of people in the group maybe have had disabilities since birth and have thought a lot about these issues. And um, let me put it to you this, I'll tell you a story. How about that? Uh, before I had MS, I had another disease. It was called an orphan disease and it was called fibrous dysplasia, which basically means I had a bone tumor in my left femur. And uh, like most people with fibrous dysplasia, it was monostatic, which means it was just one tumor. So you go through this whole big thing, you get, you get, you know, metal put on it and go through this thing. It's not bone cancer, you go through this whole bone cancer scare. Mm -hmm. And so I got into, um, this was like 2001. So I don't remember, I think it was an email group where we were talking to each other. And, um, and one of the people like me who had gotten it later in life, who had like one tumor, there's a lot of pain involved with this was complaining and he was like, oh, I hate this, you know, I can't walk, can't do this, can't do that, blah, 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 blah. And this woman gets on and starts going, you know, I am so sick of you people who got disabilities later in life. You know, you had time, you had those days when you could do all these things. So what are you complaining about now that that has been taken away from you? And so that's kind of the rub for me. That's where I'm always back and forth. Should I just be grateful about the, you know, 50 years, close to 50 years I had of being quote unquote normal, <laughs> and, although I never really was. And, um, and, 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 and then, or should I accept the grieving process? Like that's the story, you know, like do you grieve right. lots of these things more or do you, and who do you talk to about this stuff, you know? That, that's a big thing, too. So that's kind of more questions than answers, right? I mean, I don't know. What do you think? 
Do you think people like me kind of sound spoiled? I kind of was wondering if the group thinks that. I, I mean, can I, since yeah, I, I mean, I'm just wondering every, everybody later thinks, in life, can I answer that question? Oh, you're kind of uh, like me too. You came on with you later on, right? Yeah, I had my, my disability came when I was 29. Um, I don't, I think that's a really bizarre thing to say to someone that you had an ability, what are you complaining about? And I feel, for me, I think it's harder to have ability and then lose it because you kind of realize the privilege you had as a body person that has been taken away psychologically and mentally that's actually uh, it's kind of a difficult thing to deal with i personally don't yeah, it is but it's I, I i mean i am a weird creature in the sense that i became disabled and i was like okay how do i live my life like this i was just ready to go in as a disabled person i didn't i don't know i didn't I mean, I, you know, of course I got bummed out if I couldn't take part in things, but I was not. But a lot of people around me that I was in the hospital with that had support injuries, I met a lot of people that were really having more psychological problems with it than I was. So I, I think I'm weird because of that, to be honest. Like, cause I think there is a grieving process, and for some reason I didn't exactly grieve but maybe it's also because i was 29 my parents are still alive my mother was disabled all my life so i had this really between my two parents and my partner i had a really great support system and they were always very encouraging to me like oh yeah you can do it let's go do this let's go do so i think maybe that had something to do with it for me yeah, but i have a real I, like that, i'm always I, back and forth in my head whether or not i want to tell the story of being disabled or whether or not i want to be just renee who was always renee and and the disability is just sort of thing in the back i don't know you know i can't explain it it's like I, I'm, I'm almost afraid to identify as disabled, but then I talk to you guys and I'm like, oh, have I internalized ableism or whatever? Like, so I'm like, go back and forth on that a lot. <laughs> well, actually, I was thinking today, like I always have thoughts, I'm rolling around the house doing things and think, think about disability. And I think society-wise, we always make it a shameful thing to identify as disability, but why do we do that? Because people are born with disability. Disability has existed since the beginning of humanity, essentially, but for some reason throughout history, if you know, like I was doing research because I'm doing this art project, and I kind of Googled presidents with disabilities, and there was like a list of, t you know, like uh, George Washington had dyslexia, Thomas Jefferson had dyslexia, but the only disabled president we really knew about was FDR. And I kind of thought like, that's interesting because there's actually nine other presidents that lived with disability, and we don't talk about it. We're just like, FDR had a disability because he was in a wheelchair, so it was like a, it wasn't an invisible disability, I guess. I but mean, a lot of this could be specific to this particular disease because there's always that question in your mind is, I don't know if other people do experience this, but if I push myself more, maybe I'll get that part of my body stronger. If I sit back and say, I'm disabled, I can't do it. I mean, at what point is that healthy? That isn't because you are disabled and you can do stuff you just can't do everything else we, there's certain things you can do and I think you should embrace that I in my embrace the feeling of being tough and pushing on yeah I think so I that's not that's what I do so that's why I, I think agree with Priya. That. yeah go ahead what did you say I agree with Priya I think yeah, you should think, embrace it and like my mom my mom, I'll tell you the story. My mother, she basically was born in India. She was this beautiful, like, I mean, one day I'll share pictures of her, like, 
she was this gorgeous Indian woman. She was really skinny and jewelry, makeup, you know, totally opposite of me, actually, because I never did stuff like that. But she was just this beautiful woman, and she moved to America with the expectation she was going to, you know, get education, have a job. And then she got arthritis, and that idea and dream that she had got crushed, but it was... I mean, she got mad and depressed, like, you know, but it was like typical mother, daughter, you know, teenager being weird and stuff like that. So but it wasn't, and maybe I think maybe it had something to do with her disability, but I don't think it did. I think it had to do with her not being a female enough or dressing up enough. And that was really what she complained about. But as far as her disability, she just pushed through it and, now, and I think about it from her perspective, well, how incredible that was, because she had expectations in life and disability. She came from India and disabled people didn't get, you know, were considered lesser than. So, I mean, for her to push through that and be the mother she was, I, you know, posthumously <laughs> admire her. Like, I mean, I admired her even when she was alive, but, you know, even more so now when I think about it. So, yeah, um, she had a disability later in life. She did had it at the age of 24 or something, and she had two kids. And so, yeah, I think her expectations were totally crushed, but you just didn't really, she, she didn't talk about it a lot. She just did things and tried to push through and didn't really talk about it. Maybe she talked to her sisters, but she didn't talk to me or my brother about it. So, I I um I, I saw Hannah raise her hand too. I, I don't know if you wanted to respond to Renee, and then I know Jessica. So I... But please forgive me. No, no, don't even apologize. We love listening to you. It's we great. Love, yes, and this is what it's about, right? Giving dialogue. Um, and um, I, you know, I don't. Uh, I, I you know, I just want to. So, um, I just. I, 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 I talk are afraid to like be because she's talking so much and I, so that's why I feel bad like I don't want to block out someone else's what they no want to say I, I I don't mind interrupting and making sure I just want yeah I, I don't care I don't I I'm good with like making sure everyone gets heard I'm don't worry yeah. about it Ria <laughs> um I okay. did want to respond to um Renee and then I'll let Hannah speak and then let Jessica respond to John's um uh question i think she's the last person who wasn't able to give her answer but uh i wanted you know, to say something too what so did, did you raise your hand who who oh i can't hear you <laughs> oh um okay so um, yeah but i'll wait my turn oops sorry i didn't mean to do that that's okay, okay. thank you denise um, so I, I feel like everyone has their own coming to journey with disability. And I think that's like the story. Like, I really appreciated what John said. Like, are you a, do you tell your story from the victim identity or from the victor identity? And that's something I always say myself. Um, and I think our stories are, are intertwined with our identities. How do we see ourselves? What, what is our vision of who we are as a person? And I, um, I'm just going to say real quick that I feel like every person has their own journey, but um, we get to choose how we tell our story from a place of weakness as the victim or from a place of power, you know? And I feel like disability is part of such a, a human experience, whether you're born into it or whether it comes into your life later. It's just a catalyst that magnifies human feelings and struggles. Um, and oh, that's beautiful. Oh, if only I could believe that every day. <laughs> this day yeah. is a catalyst to explore inner. What did you say? That was beautiful. Oh. <laughs> what did you <laughs> uh, to, to explore <laughs> to to discover like our, our human struggles? Like it's a magnifying glass, right? Like everyone exactly. goes through yeah. struggles in life. Everyone goes but, through that self-love journey you know? right but our disability like magnifies it like when you're looking at a tablet or on your phone you pinch and zoom in right and it just uh -huh. magnifies everything and makes things go quicker right so 
questions that I had because I was born with my disability that I but had. It makes maybe... things go quicker. Yes, yes, oh. I got that. I got that yes. one. Yes. I think time. I have something I would like to say regarding sharing my story with self love. I actually submitted an art. I don't know if you guys read it, how my AFOs taught me to love myself. AFO or UFO? AFO. <laughs> Good one, Denise. <laughs> oh, I thought she was really <laughs> oh, <God>. I'm sorry. <laughs> God. <laughs> oh, John She's dropped the phone. Done. John dropped the phone. He's laughing so hard. <laughs> um, <laughs> right, right. And yeah, it's self -love. I'm so sorry. That's okay, Denise. Um, but self-love is super important. Um, Hammond, do you want to respond to Ken, uh, Renee and then Jessica? I want to make sure that you haven't gotten an opportunity to speak yet. Uh, what is wanted to, oh, sorry. sorry. Go for it. Uh, I just wanted to add to my story. I like an important fact is I wasn't diagnosed with autism until a few years ago. So I'm still, and then even then, no one really taught me what it was until I met my fian, my husband, who was then my fiance, who taught me everything about autism, and I continue to learn about it every day and why I struggle and like accepting it and finding out reasons behind it, and like no one did research or anything uh, before, but my. His mom, our mom, did research to figure out how to communicate with me and stuff like, and figure out what autism was, and that's really helped in just writing poetry and stuff, and how much Ty knows about autism has really helped, and he, he suffers with anxiety too, so he can relate to some of it, and then he struggles with his anxiety and disability too. Mm. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, Jessica, do you want to, would you like to share an answer or answer to John's question? Sure, sure. I can do that. Um, well, you guys um, know a little bit about my background. Um, I, it wasn't until October of last year when I, um, when I, um, did the Miss Wilter uh, PA competition and um, like I said before it's something that I never ever ever thought I would do nor it was something that I wanted to do I'm very I'm an introvert and but at the same time God bless me with um, you know this platform to talk about you know advocacy and and the struggles that we go through and um, it's just amazing because I, it's I I wouldn't think I would ever be into something like this or have the ability, but my abilities have been stretched. So that's great. Exactly. Thank you. All right, John. I think that was everybody minus Gina. But um... uh, yeah, uh, Jade actually was going to type her answer. Yes. She's going to type that right now, so I'm waiting on that. But while while I'm getting her answer, um, I want to I want to thank you guys for allowing me to be able to facilitate today's conversation, and I want to give you guys some parting words of wisdom. Um, something encouraging, um, as most of you probably all of you may know, um, I recently start uh, celebrated one year uh, as a YouTuber. And in that one year of YouTube, I have been able to uh, basically, in a sense, do what I'm doing on this chat today, tell my story. And I, in the facilitation of that um, YouTube channel, in the start of that, I came up with a quote that I've said on here a few times, but I want to remind you all about. Um, it's a quote I became uh, very familiar with. And, it only, and not only does it apply to my writing and every el everything else that I've done, but it also applies to basically it's my life story and my motto. And it's your situation may be hard, but 
there's always someone like me ready to lift you up again. And to me, that quote resounds so strongly because, you know, just as an example, Tylea may be going through something that's 10 times worse of what I'm going through right now, but I know, or she knows that I'm always going to be there to lift her up again when she's having, you know, a down, a down day or a bad, you know, CP day or, you know, whatever the heck happens, you know, and that, that should go for all of us as people with, you know, disabilities that we have each other to lift up, you know, ourselves when we're down and when we're able to, in a sense, lift each other up. And that's exactly what I wanted to, you know, say while Jade was typing. And Jade has told, um, Jade and I both have the same disability. Uh, we have spina bifida myel uh, myelomeningocele type 3. And she hasn't fully accepted it, even at the age of 21. She, was al she also has anxiety and depression. She has a YouTube channel, and that's her YouTube channel is basically talking about how spina bifida is a widely unknown disability. She does art, and she talks about her disability in person and as if no one knows about it, because no one really knows, in a sense, what our disability is. Because 20, 30 years ago, our disability that we have was not very well known because it was not survivable. You know, if I were born, say, around the time that, you know, Pauline or Priya or someone else was born, you know, if I were born, say, between, if I were born anywhere between or before 1994, I would surely be dead right now. I'm not going to lie. I would surely be dead right now. And she also says that people still treat or still never treat her the same. And she's left out of a, th out of a lot of things. But the one thing that I've known, I've known Jade for almost a year. And in that year, Jade has told me time and time out that, you know, in a sense that she's always ready to tell her story, you know, regardless of, you know, the social awkwardness, you know, that she has or, you know, everything, because we all have those times of social awkwardness. And, you know, there's something else that she was typing, but I'm on a rant here. Um, we all have those times where we're socially awkward, so to speak. But we all have those moments where we're upfront and ready to tell our disability story. And that's what I did with my first book, uh, A Fight to Survive, was I literally, I spewed my mouth. I let nothing hold me back. Everything that I put in there is exactly what I go through day in and day out. And I've gone through it for 26 years. But what I want to leave here with today with everything that I've heard and with everything that I've spilled about myself, I want to give you guys this. Don't let your story go untold. Don't let somebody else tell your story because it's your story. It's not, you know, my story is not Priya Ray's story or, you know, Pauline's story or Tylea's story. Your story is yours and yours only. How exactly are you going to tell it? And I hope that something I've said today resonates with you as we leave this chat. Because if you're not telling your story to the fullest of your ability, then you're not telling your story. And some may not be comfortable telling their story. That's okay. Some may be over or over excited about telling their story. I'm one of those that's in the middle. Crowds, I tell my story. When it comes to people I've only known for five seconds, I'm a little hesitant. But I've met people here today that are not hesitant to tell their story. And I've met people here today, or that I've known people here through this chat that are getting there. And I'm proud of you for each one of you for telling your story. And I realized I just left out somebody very important. And I'm going to shut up now because I want Pauline to finish. Because she was the one left out. Pauline, please forgive me. No, that's okay. I was like, who is this person special? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
please <laughs> yeah. go ahead and you're, you're the facilitator you're the host you're the you're the woman with the ideas we want to hear your side please oh thank you john um well i feel like I, I expressed what i needed to say i feel like um our stories are very intertwined with our identities um, and I know some people with disabilities lead, like they can come into a room and, and disability is their story. They lead with their story. Some people come into a room and their disability is not the first thing they lead with. That's not their story. Um, for me, I feel like um, the key, and, and I, I want to make sure that people understand that when we tell our story, it doesn't have to look like a book. It doesn't have to look like a YouTube channel. It doesn't have to look like poems exactly. or whatever else. It could just be in the way you walk through life, right? And that's how you tell exactly. your story. And that's the legacy you leave because on that day when they're celebrating your life and you're no longer here on this earth, like what are they gonna say about you? And exactly more than anything, that encapsulates what your story was. Yes, Priya. Oh, no, I'm waiting for you to finish and then I'm going to. Oh, oh okay. No, it's awesome. Um, so I, I, um, like I choose, I feel like for me, my story, um, really could only be told when I first was fully accepting of who I am. And I've, I've told the story on past crypt chats for, for the people that weren't here. Um, we, when Tylea hosted about how do we overcome negative chatter or, you know, within ourselves or within from other people. And for me, um, I, I had had a, like a coming to Jesus moment. And when I was 15 years old and just really surrendering to, um, the pain that I was going through. And I don't, I mean, physical pain, it was the emotional pain of feeling outcasted and, left behind and not like I belong anywhere um, when all you want at 15 is to belong. And so, and for me, it was a surrendering and acceptance for everything I am um, and everything I'm not. And what that um, for me meant was, uh, and, and what I felt God was telling me in that moment was your pain is not in vain. So like I said earlier, our, our disability is just a magnifying glass of all human struggle. We just mm -hmm. have to, we manifest it in a more visual way. Um, and I think there's power in telling our stories. That I, that's, I, I feel so blessed. Like I want to cry, like being in this environment in this space where everyone feels comfortable, like Jade, you stepping up and saying, yeah, I want to tell my story, but I, I feel awkward and I want to write it. And like, and we're all super accepting of that. Like that, like lights are, yes. up and gets me like at the heart level. And so um, I think there's power in sharing our story because stories give, give people strength and give each other encouragement and give each other examples of what's possible in this world. And so, um, I do think our stories are important and I, you know, John for bringing, I, I would never have thought about this topic. This is why I want to give this to the community, like community takeover. So like after John, who's next, who wants to take on the next call and what do they want to talk about? Like, let's, let's all be a part of it and all be brave because it's a safe space to do that. Um, and I think every person's journey is unique. And I'm so sorry, Renee, for that person that judged so cruelly about like how you feel like how she felt like you should or should not be grateful for your abilities or not. And so I, you know, I feel like there's a like we have to have respect for everyone's journey and where they're at and um, have empathy for them. And um, but also that you have great power and there's pain in our power. I mean, there's a uh, power in our pain. I don't know exactly. If, um, what's her name? Our power. Glennon. Yeah, there's power. <laughs> pain power. <laughs> in, my, in my point of view, there's green power because I'm always stomping on CP. So 
Right, right. And and yeah. uh, Glennon, have you heard of Glennon? Oh, I forgot her last name, but um, she's a speaker. I saw her on Oprah's Soul Sun, Super Soul Sunday. And she talked about uh, embracing our pain and how our society is always so um, uh, averted to pain. Like, and we distract ourselves with media or alcohol or shopping or whatever else it is. So we just want to distract ourselves from pain so we don't have to deal with it. But it is only through our pain that we rise. And exactly, I think that was a beautiful message that came through. Yes, Priya, I'm done. After, after you're done. No, I'm okay. done. I'm done. I, I'm going to address a few of the things. So John, the first is it is important for us to tell our stories just because we all know our stories, but I think it's also important for us to tell our stories because, you know, with all the stuff that's going on with black matters, which I completely respect because that is a story, but I feel like stories of race and sexual um, discrimination and things like that have existed much longer than the stories of disability. And, you know, studying all these, like, you know, presidents and things that have disabilities where it wasn't really even discussed, like they had problems reading, but, you know, we don't remember George Washington for his dyslexia. We remember him, as, you know, for first president whatever we remember him for and so i think it's really important for us to tell our stories so there's a history of story disability what it is and what people deal with. um the other thing i had to write it down because i'm like i'll forget about this um also i think the other thing about telling disability stories is that i think it's one of the the I, I don't know, you guys can tell me if I'm wrong, but I feel like disability minority is the one minority that actually ties all people together because it doesn't matter what kind of a person you are, you can get a disability. It's, so it's common to every type of person. So it's the one minority or movement that actually ties an entire community together, not just one group of a community and then what was the other thing say uh oh and yeah we live in you know i don't know when this happened with our society where we have tried to fix pain like mental pain depression and things like that and sometimes you just have mm -hmm. to go through depression and push through it to get to something better and you have to push through pain to get to something better and we've like kind of been living in the society where it's like oh you have pain or you feel sad we got to fix that you know here take these drugs do this this like we can't be unhappy we can't have pain but that's an unrealistic world because without suffering there isn't whatever the opposite of suffering is without anger there's no happiness so you know it's like you have to have the yin and yang of life if, if all of a sudden think like oh no, we got to get rid of this one thing it's unhealthy for society and that's what i i responding to what everyone said and i wrote it down because i wanted to make okay. so that's my reply to everyone but yeah it is important to tell your stories everyone whether hey i know you're kind of struggling in this in-between world right now of, whether you should clean, you know, identify as disabled, but that's only one identity you have. Everybody isn't described by one identity. I'm Indian, I'm a woman, I, I'm a musician, I'm an artist, I, and I'm disabled too. So it's not, identity isn't one thing. Never be ashamed to, to identify as a disabled person because it is something you go through and it's important for people to realize that in my opinion. So, there you go. That's my for today. Or maybe All they'll right. be later. I don't know. <laughs> maybe I'll call John and be like, oh, John, blah, 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 blah. what's going on? Let me rant to you more. <laughs> but yeah. Please do. Uh, I would like that, please. I know. I know you enjoy my ranting. <laughs> would anyone like to respond after? <laughs> yeah. 
I have a book idea or maybe like a article idea for me and you that I'm going to share with you later off the group. Okay, please do. I actually have to go, you guys. But um, thank okay. you so much, Pauline, for letting me do this today. And uh, guys, I will talk to you all very soon. All right? All right. Bye. Bye, guys. Bye, Bye. guys. Thank Lovely you. to meet you, newbies. Love you all. Bye-bye. Bye, Bye. Bye everyone. Okay, okay, guys. Wow. I mean, we could end it here if you guys want. We usually have a set aside for an hour and a half, and we're lucky if we meet that. Um, <laughs> it's always I have a over. for the group that's totally off topic, but yeah. This, okay. Well, I got an email from um, a researcher at OHSU, Oregon Health Sciences University, and uh, I guess I must be on some list, and uh, he asked me to be part of a study. And Okay, I'm trying to. I was trying to look it up. The the email. Um, basically, they're looking for people t uh, that have neurological conditions that are degenerative, who might need this kind of technology in the future, where they put the hat on you, BCI. B, you don't. You know what I'm talking about, right? Where you where you're controlling the computer, you're controlling your limbs through the brain and right. the electrodes, right? And they're studying the ethics of it, like I guess. And they're studying the ethics, ethics specifically around language and language. Um, I guess what the computer maintains in your language. Do you know anything about? I was going to ask anybody. Does anybody know what they're talking about? Because I don't really get it. I said I would do it. It's no big deal. They're going to ask me some is questions. That, I don't have to really is do that it. some sort of MRI? Um, it's uh, wait, I. It's hard for me to describe it. It's uh, it's uh, uh hey Hannah, I want to hear it is. later because I'd like to interview you for my DIY able talks if you don't. Sorry mind. to interrupt, by the way, just gotta go. Okay, yeah. no problem. It's um, the bioethical considerations uh, of language modeling with brain computer interface technology. Does anybody know what they're Wait, could you, uh, Renee? Yeah. You said it was bioethical. What was the rest of it? Bioethical considerations of language modeling with, with your brain, within brain computer interface studies, like with that technology. Right? Have I made any sense? I'm writing it down. I'm reading it or try to read it off her email here to me. Basically, okay, they, let me, I'm going to repeat it back to you. Let me make sure I have the right thing. <laughs> Bioethical considerations of language modeling yeah. with brain computer interface study. Technology, yeah. And they're, they're having a study on that. Okay. And uh, so I had to learn about all these different things and I. I when I looked up on YouTube, and like this is how basic my knowledge is of this, is that you guys have seen this, this the pictures of people who control things with their mind, right? Mm -hmm. Right. Without their limbs working. So they wanted, they got my name, I guess they got people with ALS, with all kinds of stuff, who might not need this, you know, in the future. And I looked it up, I know that the ethical considerations are like a hot issue right now. I don't know what they're talking about. I don't even know why anybody gets paid to do this stuff, but that's all right. <laughs> Does anybody know what they're talking about? No, I, I've not heard of that before, but I, I'm definitely interested in um, finding out more. Did, did, has anybody seen those pictures though, of those people with the hats on? Yes. Can I've you do me a favor and write it in the, can you write it in the chat? For us? Yeah. When I, it's uh, a. I'm yes, not she'll, she'll that do that. fast in writing and I just can't write that fast. Uh, okay. All right, let me see if I can. Brain, brain interface technology. Does that make sense? Brain. Pauline, you tell them. You know what I'm talking about. Oh, I have no idea what you're talking about, but I think, yeah, I think, oh, so, okay, so brain interface technology is, yeah. um, she, uh, Shayla, would you be able to type that in, um, in uh, the uh, yeah, chat? Type in it in the chat. In the uh, chat, yes. 
Thank you so much. But I think what it is, is they put like a, it's like a, like a helmet almost thing that they put on your head and they uh, basically you want to connect your brain to outside limbs to be able to do things like robotic, but human run. Right. 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 Yeah. I don't know if has anybody, know. anybody ever been offered that or does anybody like, I mean, that's not something that's out there, right? I mean, it's just like, this is futuristic kind of things, right? They're yeah, actually sure. using this stuff. Yes. Uh, I, think oh, there are. I don't research and technology that's, you know, over probably the past 10, 15 years that they've been trying to do things like that. And I think mm -hmm. it, like you, you were like having trouble writing. Remember, we were, everyone suggested right, to use right. the app. So maybe this is a technology to create something like you're thinking something and right. somehow yeah. does it on a computer. I, we could, I couldn't figure out what the ethical issues involved with that would be other than. Well, I mean, anything you know, where you're hacking you and then make the you brain. do things. What was that? Yeah. I see Sheila saying something. Maybe um maybe Stephen Hawkins used it or something. Yeah, I know. I was thinking that too. I have to look that up. Um, Shayla, what were you saying about the ethical? Um, anything where you're um, going into your brain, it, it it's going to raise some eyebrows simply because now that's your thought process. Yeah, yeah. So and you anything think where you're going yeah. in kind of kind of looking into what I'm thinking and what I'm capable of thinking and then manipulating that thought is that's where the ethical issues are raised. And, and I think sometimes that's simply because sometimes with technology, it can be such an amazing thing, but then some people get greedy <laughs> and then they start trying to manipulate a lot of things that that they shouldn't. And I, I think that's where a lot of the ethical issues come in is because they have to make sure that when they write up those interface faces, that they have to be extremely specific on how this is to be used. Because now what you don't want is someone to now use this to manipulate someone to go kill someone or right, exactly. okay, got someone that. Yeah. yeah, that kind of thing. So yeah, yeah. So that's probably where, where the ethical issue is. Because I just in. couldn't figure it out. I mean, you're sick in bed and then you can't even use your computer. I mean, and you put this thing on, you can use your computer. And I was like, what could possibly go wrong? You know? Yeah. They missed last words. <laughs> they missed last words. Right, right. right. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Right. <laughs> but, you know, um, I, uh, I think of like Terminator and how like the machine started thinking. Mm -hmm. right, right. Like humans mm -hmm. and they become jealous right so it's like where does human and and robotics blend um well, that's what i think part of the ethical thing was that at that point are you now a new a new thing you're, you're part human part robotic you're you are blended at that point right mm -hmm. right well you know Star Trek, like the cyborgs or like part mm -hmm. human robot type things. So. Yeah, yeah. Because the question then becomes, who's actually in control? You know, are you in control, or is the robot more in control? Or yeah, yeah. But those yeah. kind of questions come up in our lives. Like if you watch a lot of TV or go on Facebook a lot, or if you listen to our president, you could say, who's a are you a controller? Or, yeah, I don't yeah. know. Right? But but I understand. I understand how people could be afraid of it. But it seems also like it's such an odd thing to worry about when people are really suffering and can't move around. And you, know, you, you want them to have this stuff. Well, you know, um, that, that would be an interesting conversation to have in a future crypt chat is if you had a choice of whether or not your disability could be removed, would you take it? Ooh. Ah, cool. <laughs> yeah, because I instantly want to say yes, but then I also know that without all of the things that have happened in my life, I wouldn't have certain disciplines, you know? I got yeah. there, there are things that I... The same for me. I'm like, well, yeah, because I'm in a lot of pain, so of course... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah. then I'm... 
if I didn't have this pain and didn't have the struggle, would I be as driven as a person as I am mm -hmm. about things mm -hmm. I wanted to do? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. she's going to call me on Tuesday and I'll let you guys know what happens. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, you can press a brush. Okay, cool. You should definitely see, you know, because usually things like that, they, they're, you know, they make you sign something about what they're, so you should definitely look at that, I think. Like, whatever, whether, like, we're going to take all your thoughts and use them, or if they're going to, like, we were using it just for this. Oh, right. I can't, yeah, I mean, I'm four hours away from the hospital, so I don't think it's anything physical. Uh -huh. Which is why I don't understand why it's even an issue. What would they want to talk to me for? But okay. you have someone going with you. I'm not going. Hey, with you. It's hey, all on the phone, all on Zoom. It's okay. all about. Hey, I don't dancing. know what, what they would possibly yeah. get from me. I don't even know what the stuff is. How could I weigh in on this issue? But okay. Yeah. Have and, and I'll, I'll have have to make, make sure you know too whether you're being recorded um, because you don't. <laughs> You know, I just, yeah, just Pauline. Very, you know, in all, all honesty, be very mindful of um, your time because, you know, people can, you know, take what you're saying and make a lot of money off of what, what just what you said. And so wow. be very mindful of, you know, are you being recorded? Because if this, if they're, if they're saying this is for research purposes, you need to be compensated in some way for that research. Oh yeah, um, they're going to so, send me like 24 bucks or something, honorarium. It was like amazing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> well, that's what a lot of research things do when they're asking people. They give, you know, not a large amount of, but, you know, like 24 bucks. They'll mm -hmm. give you participate. I've done studies like, you know, it wasn't something like that, but mm -hmm. something uh, I forgot. I can't remember it was so long ago there because I was spinal cord injury. So they wanted me to take part in women with spinal cord injuries mm -hmm. and stuff like that so yeah 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 the last time i did one of these things they had it all like all the questions all worked out they even had special people asking the questions like it was it was so uh removed from anything you'd expect you know the questions were odd to us but for them they had like their graphs and you know it's all very yeah scientific, scientific so yeah you know i'll 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 see what happens. I'll be dead by the time any of this happens. I'm sure that. <laughs> you never know. You never know. Right. Did you ever think, Renee, did you ever think that you'd be able to hold a computer in the palm of your hand? No, huh. I never knew what a computer was when I was a little kid. Somebody started telling in elementary school about this thing they had that was like this big and they could put all this information on it. I remember people talking about it in elementary school. And that was as close as I got to ever imagining it. Something yeah. this big. When I was in school, we had to take a computer class, but it was like, like when I think about it, I was like, God, it was nothing like what it is now. They were like, we had to do these flow charts. And I was like, what is this? This is so boring. Why are they making us do this? What does this even mean? And now I think back, I'm like, God, they should have taught us programming and stuff. What were they making us do these flow charts that they weren't really ex because I don't think the teachers actually understood either. <laughs> Remember like, the floppy disk? Yes. Remember yeah. the floppy disk? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. I, remember I remember back in the 70s or 80s, people would say, I'm going to go into computers. It's like nobody says that anymore because computers i mean it's such a huge huge field right you're going into programming or you're going into technology you don't go AI into computers <laughs> yeah, yeah computer world is really huge now it's not just flow charts what, yeah. what's huge technology well, I want to I want to um, welcome Jermaine. Um, Jermaine, yes. thanks so much for um, coming. We are almost done here, but I am so glad you uh, made your cameo. cameo. Jermaine, awesome! If you have Instagram, you need to follow it. He dances, and it's every time I see one of Jermaine's posts, I just smile. It makes me so I'm like this is awesome. awesome. So I love. He has cerebral palsy and he's a dancer. Was, cool. What, Denise? Oh, I was going to ask you something. Um, 
I don't know if anyone has this, but um, I think like, um, sometimes when I have um, any sort of or when I'm at school or anything, um, I was just wondering what's the time of being up that I might have because mine is more hidden, and I don't know, like, what What are your thoughts about that? Like, when should I bring, because I always feel like I don't want people to, like, look down on me to say, like, oh, you, you're just doing that because you want sympathy and, like, yeah. what do you, what? Should I, um, how should I address that? Okay, so, um, you were going in and out, so I'm going to just try to, uh, piece it together. You're asking about disclosure? Yeah, like, when should I bring it up? If, if I'm in a class or anything, like, and they know there's something or something, and, um, like, I always feel like if I bring it up, it might, do I want sympathy? Like, how do I get past that, you know? I feel like I want to answer this. Yeah, please. Okay. Okay, so basically what you're saying is if 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 your disability is kind of visible or you kind of have a, a need or situation with your disability, how do you let other people know? I know for me that sometimes um, I have spasms in my legs and like sometimes my legs go the opposite side when I walk. So people often assume like my shoes are coming off when I wear a brace or, or something is wrong. I just answer the question because you're going to keep assuming what's wrong with me. So I just, I just answer it anyways. I think you just got to get comfortable with telling people about your disability. And it's not an easy thing because people assume a lot as soon as they see you. But yeah. As long as you're, you just got to get comfortable with telling people. I know it. I know when we go into new spaces, a lot of the times people are already trying to figure out how to help us. Mm -hmm. which, yeah. is, which is, which is true. Like, you know, even me, yeah. as adult as I am, people are still trying to help me. I think people got to realize as long as you allow me to show you how you can help me, then you don't have to tell me what you think I need help in. Like, I know myself, but sometimes when you're disabled, people just automatically assume you need help. And um, yeah, it's a tough thing, but you just have to let people know what kind of help you need and what kind of help you don't need. Um, you know, I've had to learn that with the kinds of things I do because I'm out there. I do event planning and I do a clothing brand and I do all these different things. Wow. So it's, be, it's being specific, you know. People will yeah. try to, you know, that's a, that's a big thing that I've learned. And one of the reasons I'm like that is because of my mom. She... Uh, from a young age, she taught me self-advocacy. So, like, if I don't want to do something, I'm definitely not doing it. So, I think, <laughs> I, I think, I think when you have someone like that in your life, that kind of teaches you self-advocacy. You don't feel nervous to tell somebody, you know, what, I'm not comfortable with this, and I'm not, I'm not okay with this, or I'm not going to yeah. do this today. And, and it's 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 tough to tell people that, but you know you better than anybody else. There's no shame in letting people know what help you need or what help you don't need. So that's what I really say. Thank you. You're welcome. I think you said something interesting. Um, well, first, Jermaine, thank you. I'm so glad you're here. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yay. Uh, and really interesting. Denise, you said something Good like, perspective. yeah, you said something like, um, I don't know if I want sympathy. So I guess is yeah. what's your intention of telling them? Like, like I can, 
um, say there was loud music and someone was trying to talk to you, would another person have a problem with saying, hey, um, can you come a little closer and speak to me into my ear because I can't hear you, right? So if you're in a situation like a classroom, yeah. if, if there's a need uh, to say, hey, by the way, I do have a disability and I may need help from time to time with X, Y, Z. Um, mm -hmm. then it's just a matter of fact. It's not like I'm having to explain myself. I'm having to like, you know, share like alcohol anonymous. Hi, my name's Denise. <laughs> you know, it's, it's just like, Hey, this is something I, I work with. Um, and so I, I, this is what I need. Um, so it's nothing. To be one, I mean, one. I mean, an example I have is, um, you know, I had a situation when I was in college. Um, I'm still in college, actually, so that's not really gone away. But I had a situation when I was in college where I was, um, you know, I had started coming to class a little late, and that was because my wheelchair had stopped working and the professor had noticed. And I just explained to him what was going on. You know, I'm trying to get my chair fixed, and right now I have a manual chair, and the manual chair is not the best because I don't really fit the manual chair. So it's 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 just letting people know what's going on. Like they'll notice, even if they're not telling you, they probably already noticed. You, you yeah, because one know. time I was in the classroom and these these kids were like looking at me. They were looking at each other. They were whispering, and then they they were kind of shaking a little bit, and they looked at me, and I was like, really you're doing that to me like, i was i was in there and i'm a um i'm a instructional aide so i could like scan the room and i'm like wow you guys are really but they were mocking me and i was like guys don't know anything you know you think you're, you think you're like being awful and like look at me I'm like making fun of someone like I don't know what they were thinking but you know I kind of had to put them in their place a little bit because like no one likes that and like if if I don't speak up maybe they'll do that to someone else and That's true That's and hurt someone else that's so, true. so that was an opening moment where I could really share my story, but it, it, it was kind of, it kind of made me uncomfortable to do that in the first place, because like, I don't like, I'm not one to like, be in the spotlight, you know, so, um, but I just felt like I had to do it like because they needed to learn you know that wasn't acceptable right well um, it, i i also think oh am i oh yeah i'm, I'm off me i also think we people just don't know like if they don't you know we are a minority so it, not everybody yeah and they're kids so and they're know? kids and kids are mean. That's just what kids do. They're like mean and unthoughtful sometimes. So, um, yeah, and it's good you did that because you know you're teaching these kids like, oh, I shouldn't do that because ability, <laughs> yeah. and this is why you want to do ABC. You know, <laughs> but like me also, like when I go to places and it's not accessible, like I'm in a wheelchair, so. You know, if there's not enough room between clothes or aisles, I have to tell someone because, you know, you know like, I'm not going to, you know, there are other disabled people in wheelchairs, and sometimes I'll even just take my wheelchair and push right through and be like, move all the stuff to the side with my wheelchair, just to be like, hey, you know, I've I'm in that. here trying to stop and I've done that with my cart and Safeway. I have done that. Um, I've pushed things over. For me, because I used to. For me, because I used to work at Macy's, one of the biggest Macy's. Because I'm from New York, so I used to work at Macy's, one of the biggest Macy's 
on 34th Street. So a lot of the times the customers would actually ask me if I'm a customer. And I would have to educate them. And it's like, I work here as an associate and I have my whole badge and everything. And they would still, you know, treat me as if I'm a customer and I would have to show them my badge again and again and again. And, and you know, it, it's just a lot of the times with society, even with me getting on the train and the bus and all that stuff, I just think it's an automatic thing for people to think that people with disabilities don't have a life outside of their disability. Mm -hmm. I think that has to mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. um, I do everything I can to show that in my everyday life. Like, I'm not just disabled. I go out, I dance, I do fun, creative stuff with my friends. I, I try my best to show that. Because if I don't show that, people will just think it's one dimension. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's a good point. That's, that's why I'm so free on my platform. That's why you see all these different sides of me because I cannot, I don't like how disability is currently being portrayed because that's not even reality for most of us. Right. It's, it's very like, help me. And, and that's not even what it is. Mm -hmm. I, and I think to the point that you were making about the students, a lot of what disability awareness is, is really education. The lack of education yeah. is 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 a problem, and current like um, you know a lack of education and a lack of awareness. And there's also people with you know they may not have a physical disability, but they have a different disability. And I just think breaking down what that <laughs> even is like an person a little kid because they kind of made fun of someone or just leave it alone and just. I mean, I, I wouldn't suggest leaving it alone. I, I think you can make it into a teachable moment. I think leaving it alone is not going to do anything but think that what they were doing is okay. One, okay. Of the big, one, of, one of the big things I believe in, at least as I've gotten older, is that if you're comfortable with something one time, they'll just think it's okay over and over again. Uh, so for me, when I see I have an issue with anything in life, I just kind of call it out because I don't want to feel like it's uncomfortable. Okay. I, I don't I don't believe in, you're going to have uncomfortable conversations with me. I'm just big on that. We're going to go there, even if you don't want to. <laughs> no, it's important. <laughs> it's, uh, it's very funny. I'm just, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry. Shayla, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say it's very important because what tends to happen is, is when you don't use that as a teachable moment, because they are kids, so they're only doing what they have already seen or they're doing out of lack of knowledge. And True. so what will happen is... Off. Yeah, exactly. So, so they're mm -hmm. going to do that thing. And so using that as a teachable moment... Um, will create that space for them because they don't have that so they may not have that social awareness and so okay. they will become adults that don't have that social awareness if we don't take the moment to say this is the correct way to ask about what you don't know you know what i'm saying like you know because sometimes kids do stuff out of fear they don't know they don't want to ask they want to be cool you know <laughs> that all the things <laughs> so so you know it but they're then, trying to fit in. Yes, exactly. And we yeah. see those adults, and those adults are that way sometimes because they never had anyone to correct them along the way, or they mm. never had anyone call them out on the thing that they were doing. Just like he was saying, you know, don't be afraid to say to use that as a moment to say, okay, this is my this is my space and and what's happening, and this is how I'm going to use that platform. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Essentially advocating is really what you're doing is you're teaching people why they have to make things accessible. And I really like one of the things I was trying to work in with my group is I really wanted to go into schools and talk to kids about disability and, you know, cause I'm in a band. So I went to a little bit about me going in, getting on a stage, climbing up, playing. Right. Woo -woo. And I, yeah. I just think, 
really appeals to kids are like, oh, she's in a band that makes her cool. But then I would take that coolness and be like, so the reason I can do this is because the ADA exists and places have to be accessible and the places that aren't accessible, people help me do it because they realize I can't get onto a stage by myself. And so I just think when kids learn about that and they see someone that they think that are doing something that they might want to do and then they see, oh, a disabled person is trying to do it too, but things like the ADA and all these, you know, places being accessible, like what we fight for, it, they understand why it's important. And then they'll tell their dad, you can't park in that handicapped spot, dad. That's for people with disabilities. You're not disabled, don't park there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's my other yeah kids that with their parents with smoking so i'm like well if kids don't want their parents to smoke they won't let their kids park. parents park in an accessible spot either <laughs> yeah. well and i think you know yeah definitely raising awareness is important and how we raise the awareness is also important i mean because you, you can easily shame the kids right because our feelings are hurt because we're the butt yeah, yeah. we're the butt of the joke in that moment Mm -hmm. And how do we come and respond in a way that opens up the dialogue and helps them see? Because really what people make fun of is, is they make fun of it because they don't understand it. They don't understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. They don't understand. Yeah. And Denise, you seem like an extremely kind person. So I know that the more confident Thank you are with being able to say because it, it does take time you know what i'm saying it, 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 is, it is a it's an, a very awkward space to be in it's a very awkward yeah. situation to be in so i know that you know I, i'm confident that you'll oh. as your confidence builds with you know being able to say something in those situations you'll find yourself being more and more capable of, you know, kind of turning the, turning the, the face of it to them and having, and posing the question, you know, what do you think it, it is that is going on with me or what, why are you taking the time to, um, or, or what are you thinking? You know what I'm saying? That, that type of, that type of thing, because sometimes they don't even know. So you just ask yeah. him, hey, why why did you think it was okay to laugh at me? Or why are you laughing? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I kind of turned it around on them. I'm like, would you laugh at me if I was in a wheelchair? Like, how is that not okay, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, and I think, you know, unfortunately, because you're considered a teacher, I think, like, yeah. all teachers are kind of – on attack by kids, <laughs> it's like you won't be the first teacher or the last teacher that they make fun of, <laughs> whether right, exactly. it's a disability or a mustache or. It doesn't matter. <laughs> and I'm I'm a sub, so it's like I have a double whammy kind of thing. Like they see me and they know they could take advantage of someone already. You know. No. You know what though? I you set the tone when you mm -hmm. walk in, right? Mm -hmm. You, you could say, yeah. you got, you, when you come in there confident, um, and a lot of times, I mean, like you said that your disability is hidden, but it's there, there's, it's obvious there's something different about you, Denise. Um, yeah. and so just to call the elephant in the room as, you know, and just say, Hey, I miss what's your lot. Do you go by Mrs. I go by Miss Denise. They can't say Rufar. I don't know why. They okay. Just, so, hi, yeah. I'm Miss Denise. I'm your sub for the day. Um, I just want to address the the elephant in the room because you may have some questions for me. So we can do these questions and we can move on with our day. Mm -hmm. You know, and okay, yeah. if you just come in confident, people take advantage of people that they think they can take advantage of. Exactly. Agreed. Yeah. And especially a sub. <laughs> right. <laughs> Unfortunately, that's or like the abuse, abuse of abused of the school system. Yes. I, I think I think my response <laughs> to Denise would probably be, um, you know, just educate them. Take this moment okay. to really 
educate the students and, and like she said previously, just walk in there with confidence. When yeah. you wear when you wear your confidence, no one can take it off of you. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. and, 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 you yeah. should I should send you some of my zines and you should just take them in and give them to those kids. Oh, yeah. I guess opportunity to inform kids about disability and you should yeah, but each each disability is different and not all people with meningitis are the same you know like but, but that's okay. okay that's something you can yeah. explain to them say this, yeah. is just, this is how it came this is how i am but people with men and all people all different cases of meningitis are different I'm yeah. not, yeah, not exactly. I, it doesn't always look like this. It can look uh, different. Yeah, as well as I'm sure as all people with spinal cord injuries. Are spinal different. cord injuries or cerebral palsy or. Or, or accents. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You can, you, can it, it. You, you can relate it to yeah. anything. People's noses are different. You know, people's yeah. you know, bellies are different. You know what I'm saying? So everybody has a belly, but some people are different. You know, so you yeah. can really use <laughs> it and or make it real logical for them. People's financial states. Yeah, are everything. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Things are like, different. So, cool. like, yeah. I'm not wearing the cool whatever, whatever's cool now. I don't know. Whatever's <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm wearing the coolest outfits that, you know, my parents wouldn't get them for me or whatever, you know. So, there's yeah. a I'm trying to fit in in all different ways. So, I feel like that's like the group of people that, could totally relate to you and you know yeah. understand you're so lucky that. actually um denise like i want you to really take in the opportunity you have here if you choose to take it right that you have the ability to be called in as a sub and be exposed yeah. to so many students throughout your school district and mm-hmm. spread a little education and awareness yeah. um and in a way that's like ask Ask, have them ask you the questions. You don't have to go in and make a speech, right? But yeah. you can just, they're going to ask you what they're curious about. Mm-hmm. So what, yeah. what grades do you teach? What grade um, is I'm, I'm an instructional aid sub. So I teach from um, kindergarten all the way up to uh, Eighth grade, I guess. I don't want to go past eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> brutal. <laughs> brutal. <laughs> or, or, or eighth grade can be pretty tough, too. Let me see. <laughs> I'm so excited for you because that is the perfect age to educate kids about what dis- your disability is. And, and yeah, they but- have questions, questions that you won't even think about. Kids think. Kids think outside the box in so many different They definitely do. <laughs> so, yeah. Kids, kids are really blunt. I mean, like, yeah, they they're, are. Um, they're so blunt. <laughs> I know. Like, I remember once my friend's kid came up to me. He's like, so what the heck happened to you anyway? Why are you going to be that? bother me. I was just like, Oh, that's cool. It's honest. Okay. I'll, I'll. And the mom was like, Henry, what are you doing? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm answering the question. I'll, and then I like to say, well, you see, you have a spinal cord. You have one, too, and you're back. And I fell, and it got damaged. And so you see this thing, it controls all parts of your body. And, and then, you know, I give them a little science thing and explain. And, and the kids are like, oh, okay. That's so cool. Yeah. That is awesome. Yeah. All right, guys. I, I'm rooting I'm rooting for Denise. I really am. Like, oh, I know. Thank you. I, oh. like, like, like I can hear the nervousness, but I'm sure you got this. It'll take time. Oh yeah, Denise. Thank I'm gonna you. I'm gonna be like Denise, this is what you should tell those kids. I'll, I'll, tell, you, <laughs> I'll tell you when I start I start in August um nineteenth and I'm kind of already nervous about the math situation and how that's going to go. Right, right. Everyone's going to be licking their mask and putting it on their eye like a pirate. 
<laughs> well, exactly. you all the things you're not supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. It's going to be great. I can't well, wait. Maybe I'll write a zine for you to give to kids. I'll, I'm going to create a zine for you to share with kids, Denise. Oh, sweet. Thank you so much. I you're love welcome. it. Think about it. I'm going to, I'm going to create that for you. So oh, you can... thank you. You're welcome. That is so cool. I love that. I love it. All yeah. right, guys, we are now over. Um, <laughs> thank you. You are the, the fab five who have uh, stayed to the end. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, it was I did. Good to see you, everyone. Yeah, yeah, it was great. I'm really, I'm doing these DIY able talks on Instagram Live, and I pretty much want to interview everyone on this group about dis their disability, and you can talk about whatever you want. Okay. I just, I'm just interested in learning, so we should just definitely connect and. Okay. And interview Pauline too. I don't like to call them interviews. I like to call them talks. And yeah. It was great. Well, the girl that I interviewed la this last Friday, uh, Mariella Paulino, she's deaf from meningitis. Actually, she had meningitis and had became had a hearing disability because of it. And she, at the end of it, she was like, "I have two questions for you, Priya." <laughs> I was like, "Okay." I, I, I really like meet her. Great. Yeah, she's awesome. She's just really busy, so I think it's hard for her to come um, to the. But um, yeah, it was great. I loved my conversation with her. Did, it was, she, did she know sign language? No, she has a cochlear implant. So uh, I talked to her about that because that's a big controversy in the deaf community of uh, the cochlear implants versus not getting them. And yeah, she, yeah I don't know. She just really gave you know explained why she and she was like seven when she became deaf. So. You know, she explained why she got the cochlear implant, but yeah. that she said she didn't know any other deaf people, so didn't know why they wouldn't want to get it. But she totally respected that, and I just thought, I don't know, I really is she like. A part it. Of the, is she a part of the deaf community? I, I don't know. I didn't get that far. We were kind of talking about technology and disability, so that was like what we were. Oh, okay talking about and so she was explaining okay. what the cochlear implant was and it was really great for me because I had no idea so I was like this is so exciting yeah. and then she was like DIY ethos as she was like I'm making a sil I love your DIY I'm gonna make a silicone case for my cochlear implant I'm making a mold and I was like oh my god you're awesome so I was just like it's an, great it's an interesting it's an interesting procedure and in how they um, have to cut open your brain and insert it. And if it doesn't work, you know, you're kind of out like $2,000 and yeah. Yeah, how so, all her yeah. operations got paid for, I don't know, because she was a kid and with a disability. So hopefully, you know, Medicaid and Medicare like chipped in for that. She, we didn't really talk about that aspect of it. Oh, but, okay. Well, you know, and I know um, Mariella made a uh, an appearance last week on Crip Chat, um, and she has such a great energy. But she's also yeah. um, she is also you know head spearing a lot of disability pride move. Um, I don't know movement. Yeah, and, like uh, so July yeah. pride. Yeah, July is yeah, disability pride month. Um, it's oh. the 30th anniversary of the ADA this year. Um, and so maybe that's something we look at yeah. for July or, you know, if anyone wants, maybe we can have a topic of like all the good stuff that we can be proud of. Like, what are we mm -hmm. proud of about our community and our history? And, you know, Crip Camp, of course, did a great job introducing that to the general public, but like as people part of the community what are we proud of as you know to be part of so um but i am gonna put out a call i don't have a guest host for next week if anyone um wanted to guest host i know jermaine you expressed interest maybe at a future I, um crip chat so if that if you wanted to take on next week but i will put out a 
um, a, I don't know, a casting call to people <laughs> on Crip yeah. Chat? You could call it an open call. An open, an open call? Open call, yeah. That's what they get, or artists, they're like, we're doing an open call for art. Oh, so okay. You know, call for hosts. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. So we're going to do an open call for anyone that would like to guest host next week or sign up for future um, Crip Chats. But um, okay. yeah, that would be awesome. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. I'm so yeah, glad to have you back, Shayla and Jermaine. Welcome. Hope to have you come back again. Okay. I don't know why. I just want to be like, come back. It works. <laughs> yeah, I'll come back. Yeah, I'll come back. <laughs>